whatever I like to do the most. Shall I repeat that for you? Please. So mission is to bring back, give back to life what life gave me. And those are my best quality, best, not best in a ranking them as somebody else they are, are the best. They are the best because I feel good with them, because I own them, because I practice them, yes? And vision will be to have more and best of whatever I like the most. So in that sense, the grit, having a connection with the grit, that inner force that drive us to survive and to create. And you know, there is a lot of studies about who make it and who don't make it and how their passion, their grit and their perseverance and their focus is what make people go what they need to go, even in situation of uncertainty, yes? So now imagine that we add to that the, the acronym of what it means grit for us. So it's growth with our inner resources that we're gonna in increase even more to inspire, to be inspired and to inspire others and to keep going in a transformation that is gonna last all our life. Because you know, as more you know, you know that you know so, that you don't know it all. And then always there is things that we can learn. For people at, at my age, we are quite challenged by learning about all these online business. And then we have a lot to learn. And we, we as you know, we learn in a very particular way because the online business was not in our education when we were growing up, while, while another generation is so easy for you. So that means that I have the possibility to keep, as my sisters say, to keep my neurobic going because I help myself and my brain to stretch even more to learn things that was not in my menu or my manuals 30 years ago or 20 years ago. So it's very interesting how we go aging being every time younger, not only because we look younger in comparison of other generation, but because we learn, we learn younger. Yeah, I hope that concept also passed through. So I think, I think aging nowadays also is perceived in such a different way than before. And for that, for me, that I start working at the age of 13 and now I'm 61, of course that happened because I have grit and I have a purpose and I have my vision clear that it reshapes itself every year or three years, but still I have my path and that path can get surprised with especially what's happening now since March with all this, what happened to us in all over the world, but still my path is my path. It gets slightly altered, it gets slightly uh, pause for some action, but it didn't get paused in all of it. So this is what I wanted to share with you today about how important to keep your grit uh, shining. And, and if I tell you about this program, so it's seven sessions that we meet every week and every week we learn about some part of the self and the self-development and how to shine what is our self even better and better and to be at service for others. And the other level is that we prepare people to be great coaches. This is part of my work and the other part of my work is I train mentors in the work of, of uh, breath work. We have the great breathing, and it's, which is uh, based in the conscious connected breathing, a whole methodology I learned in the early 90s. And since then I practice and I train people from around the world in the conscious connected breathing and all that also I took it to the business world and corporate world since the 90s and we and we mix me and my team this knowledge about about the how how having a personal purpose and vision can help the uh, uh, the companies and can help the community to get theirs because we work in the concept of win 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 means productivity people and planet so it's not only us, it's how I am committed to my community, I'm committed to my planet, I'm committed to my family, but at the same time, how important for me to take care of myself because there is so much to do. And then I need to take care of myself to be able to be at service in the best way possible. And, and all that take us about these um, beautiful three principles of the positive psychotherapy. And one of them is the positum 
as I told you before, what means, what is given, what's there, and also how to see what's happening to us as much as possible, which corner of it is we can learn from it, which corner of what's happening to us, even when it really could be seen so uncertain or so dramatic, where the light can filter to be able to learn from the situation and see the whole picture, not only the negative part, but also the positive part. The whole picture, whatever the whole picture in, involves. And the second principle is to be in balance. And of course, life will take us out of balance. So how we can learn and go back to balance? And then life will take us again out of balance. So we learn another lesson and we go back to balance. And in this process, there is the third principle that it's called the principle of consultancy. So when life takes us out of balance, we already, we are wise enough or experienced enough to be able to see how much we can do to go back to balance. But sometimes the situation is bigger, bigger than us. So the principle of consultancy is to be able to be clear and ready to go to mentorship, to go to the doctor, to go to the naturopath, to go to the coach or to go to the therapist, because this situation gets bigger than me. So again, I learn from it. And this is another experience I have, but this was the principle of consultancy when I am vulnerable enough to ask for help. And I think when, when we are in that process, when we know that first we're not perfect and secondly, we're not seeking perfection, we're vulnerable and we can keep learning through the time that help us more and more to go to Anu and, and ask for her help according to her knowledge because I have a knowledge in psychotherapy and mentorship, but I don't have the knowledge about what is her field. And in a humble and beautiful way, then she can help me in my path and vice versa. So this is what I teach around the world in different languages. I work in Arabic, Spanish, and English, and maybe slightly different wording, because if I'm in a business or in, I'm, I'm in a network for women or in a network for men, but this is in general is what I do and what I offer. So I'm very happy to answer your questions and very happy to be in this space with you. Thank you so much. Uh, what can be done during this time when people are really losing businesses, really losing money, really feeling that they don't know how to bring back that balance? And it feels as if uh, there aren't enough people to hold people. Well, though because either they are losing someone important or they're losing their businesses that are important or they are losing it, it, it's more like a loss that's going on how do you hold yourself what makes you bring back what can help you to bring yourself back to balance thank yeah. you yeah well i think from my own experience that my father died when i was 3 years old and i had to move from my first country and from my second one, and now this is my third or fourth migration. I think there is no methodology that will bring us back what we lose and, and the experience that we have from this loss, which sometimes is so tragic, like what happened to us with my father when he was 29 years old and went like this to a heart attack. It's about how, to, how we learn to get over our pain and be able to react to that experience in a different way. So, and it's, it's, I think it's our duty to really heal every, every shape of victimhood that we were exposed to. Wow. Therefore, when life, when life sent us again, another situation like this, losing businesses, losing friends. I'm from Venezuela, imagine how, much pain we are carrying of Venezuelan situation now. How many of my friends and family are, are spread around the world? How people without, some of them without passport or waiting into the frontier of some countries to be accepted. So there is a lot of pain, yeah? Before Venezuela, I, I was in Lebanon and before Lebanon, I was in Iraq. So if we're gonna talk about oh countries, God. oh my God. Imagine how much pain somebody can care, how much losses we have had. Um, remember 15 years of war in Lebanon. I mean, every house have, have, have lost somebody, apart from the loss of, of trust and so many things. So I think one of my major uh, achievements in life is it has been to have healed victimhood. Uh, 
So when, and when something happened like this time and um, like we feel like bombarded or crushed with a situation, all our energy can be ready to deal with that situation. But if we don't heal our victimhood, so we're like cut, our energy is so cut, our vibration is low. And then is this event is another one piling up in all the other events that we didn't see, that we didn't heal, that we didn't integrate to our system. And I think, I think I know this is what makes the difference between some people and another. For that, please, please, please use this opportunity, even though it's very painful that about businesses and about health, please ask for help. Here is Anno, here is me and my team. There is so many people around the world that, that I'm in so many organizations that they are offering a lot of work with, with kindness and with generosity. Ask for help and we will find a way to, if we cannot help you in your story, we will find a, somebody from the team, somebody from the network to be able to help you. And please don't be alone in this situation. Ask for help. That's a very strong message. Don't be alone. And I'm so grateful to you to accept invitation, to be patient and to be so kind. Um, I have one more question. When I was hearing Manish, he was talking about when the money is not there. Now let's not just take money when the independence is not there, when the freedom is not there. Let's, let's, we can put it anything. Anything is less. It's not just the outsiders or it's the outside world that kills us, but it's the people inside the house and how they treat you because things change for you. You're not in power anymore. You're not that significant person anymore. How do you, it's so much easier to deal with the crap outside, but so much more difficult to deal with the crap, which is right inside the house. And today, very often I've been sent literally voice recordings of people having fight at home and it's scary what i hear at times how do you maintain love equation and trust within the house and how do you hold each other at the time when we have no one outside to scream or shout at but we are probably blaming each other for something that's bigger than each one of us thank you yes i think I think when home is the place of danger, is what, as we say in therapy, when a child is abused in the street, run home for refuge. But if the abuse is at home, there is no place to run to. So it's very dramatic in that side what's happening. And, and I, what can I tell you more than pray, focus, meditate, remember you're not alone, find a way to ask for help, find a way to ask for help. But I also, and I also tell you that there's another type of prison. I've been there, all addicts lose their freedom. So there is many ways that we can prison ourselves. Yeah. So also when we're addict and we depend on something to be able to live or to feel, that also is another way of prison. So there is different way how we can prison ourselves apart from all the pain that comes from outside. And I think it's coming, I, and I remember in early 90s, I was so impressed when I entered into the world of meditation. And I remember asking, why do, you, do we say three times, Om Shanti, Shanti, Shanti? And I was explained that we ask for mercy from what nature could, could do to us. And we ask for mercy from what others in their ignorance they do to us. And the third one is what we do to ourselves, yeah? And I was so impressed by that. And I remember when I decided to heal my addiction, it was when I understood that addiction is taking freedom from me. So I was a fighter for freedom, but at the same time, I have this addiction. So it's like so, so con contradictive in what, what we were doing. And I remember that that was one of the major impulse that helped me to go through the process of recovery because we need our inner freedom. So coming back to people that are present in their own home because of domestic violence or because of so many situations, please look for the freedom of your mind, even a little bit, even to find a way to pray and meditate, even for these five minutes that you get peace. And, and I'm praying for you too that we can find different ways that 
peace and justice preserve and get bigger and bigger around the world. And it's the number, it's the goal number 16 from the SDGs. And, and this is one of the mo very important ones that everybody could live in, in peace and justice. And that starts with the self. So I can tell you from yourself in my field, we work in something we call the personal law. And the personal law is that one negative thought that is so persistent in us that make us be really living a situation that is not true. Like I'm not good enough or I don't deserve or I don't know. And, and how that becomes so persistent and so repetitive that we follow it as a law. So one thing that we work is how to heal while the world is giving us more laws, how to heal that personal law inside of us and to be able to break free from limitation from the inner self. And I dare to promise you that every person, every person that break free and find their inner self and the way how they can express it out, that means a family that's gonna heal, that means a community that's gonna heal, and that means that whole society have more chance to heal. So for that, I would like to, to leave you today with that thought of, of grit and resilience and love for humanity and hope that together is better. And remember, if we, if we walk alone, maybe we can go faster, but if we come together, we will go further. So for that, I'm here with you today. For that, Anu is at this time, is almost 11 in her country, is doing all these interviews and, and connect with us and work with us because we have the hope that together we can make it better for so many people. Thank you so much for this space, Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank My you, learning of today you. is going to be great. Thank you so much. I really, really appreciate your presence. Thank you. Me, thank you. Me too. And thank you to all the other speakers and hope to meet you on the way, some way, some place and sure continue our sure work will. together. Absolutely. Thank you again. So bye-bye. 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 Some little